Call the Honourable Mary Ann Strait. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, as we uh, discuss the, uh, the budget that this government has handed down, I think it's important to consider the government's progress through its agenda to exploit all of New Zealand's natural resources. In that context, Mr. Speaker, it's necessary to look at the importance that the government places on its environment budget. So I've taken a look at vote environment and I find it absolutely remarkable that there has not been one single policy initiative in the environment budget. Not one new idea, not one new program, not one new policy initiative to protect and maintain and enhance our environment. The Minister has done things, uh, but they are not reflected in this budget. Let me uh, give, you some exa uh, give the House some examples, Mr Speaker. The budget for vote environment is to be set against our claims, our diminishing claims, and our, um, our claims that are consistently under criticism of our being 100% pure. We have poor and declining water quality. We have uh, erosion of our protections for our environment proposed in the Minister's uh, second tranche of RMA Resource Management Act amendments. And we have uh, some self-interest reflected in the water uh, recommendations and proposals that the Minister put out earlier this year. I would really like to know whether the Minister even put in a bid for her environment vote, because it is not apparent from this, uh, this budget. Mr Speaker, if I just list some of the things that are contained in the environment vote environment, part of the budget, let's have a look at them environmental management obligations and programs. No change, absolutely no change. Improving resource management, a drop of $2.4 million from the previous year. So improving resource management as a budget line gets a cut. This needs to be explained and if the members opposite wish to give the minister a heads up, that will be asked in the estimates questions when she appears before the select committee. I'll, I'll tell the House where one area of increase has happened, and it's funding to service the Minister. Funding to service the Minister has gone up by $313,000, and the note attached to that in the vote is that the Ministry expects that there will be an increase in ministerials as a result of the RMA and water management reforms. Now, does she think, does she think? Clearly, she is aware, the Minister is aware, that the RMA reforms and the water management reforms are going to be controversial. So in order to bolster her own ability to answer the questions that are going to flood in, and the challenges that are going to be uh, um, taken against her, she's increased the funding to service her office by $313,000. That doesn't enhance the environment one iota. Advice on environmental hazards and waste. No change. No change there. The Waste Levy Administration and assessment of projects for funding by the levy a drop of $600,000, $610,000 actually, but $600,000 drop in the Waste Levy Administration and assessments of projects that are funded by that levy to see how various industries can minimise their waste production. And so there isn't any vision about next year or the year after and whether or not the, our, our waste production and our minimisation of that 
is going to improve. There are no new targets. There are no new ideas. In fact, there's a cut of $600,000 in that area. Contaminated sites remediation fund, no change there. Contaminated sites remediation fund, no change. How is the minister intending to deal with new contaminated sites as they emerge? She only has to look in her backyard, the Owaka pit in her electorate that has had um, uh, MDF board combusting spontaneously and releasing uh, toxins into the air. And this has been happening for months. The fire has only just gone out in the last two or three weeks. But the minister clearly doesn't bother about it, even though it's in her electorate, because the prevailing wind makes those toxic, toxic fumes blow over the people who live in the electorate of my colleague, Megan Woods. And so she's not so, uh, she's not so concerned about the people in that electorate that she thinks there's anything that needs to be done about the burning of formaldehyde and the release of those toxins into the atmosphere, creating an unpleasant smell and an, un and an irritating um, um, set of toxins that have caused some discomfort. So even in her own backyard, Mr Speaker, the Minister has not appropriated or even asked for additional funds, it would seem, asked for additional funds to address contaminated sites because that pit, the Owaka pit, is now in a state that needs remediation. The fire is out, now the ground has to be recovered. Contestable waste minimisation fund, no change. This uh, fund has a certain allocation a year and sometimes the funds aren't spent in one year and they're moved into future years, but there is no change. Where there has been an increase, here we go again, an increase to the Environment Protection Agency, uh, Environment Protection Authority, Mr Speaker, an increase of $1.9 million. And why? So that the EPA, the Environment Protection Authority, can implement its functions under our exclusive economic zone legislation and the Continental Shelf Act of 2012 so that when the challenges are brought about the illegality of the law that this parliament has passed with respect to uh, controlling shipping above the continental shelf, which I am still of the opinion is not legal, then there will be sufficient resources in the EPA for them to address those things. Mr Speaker, there's no change to the fresh start of fresh water, clean up New Zealand water bodies. No change to that. Rotorua Lakes restoration program, a slight re rephasing of funds between the years, but no overall change. Mr Speaker, Lake uh, Okareka in uh, Rotorua is suffocating from hornwort. It's a hugely uh, invasive aquatic plant and there has been nothing in the way of additional funding put aside to restore Lake Okareka, which is one of the Rotorua lakes. I've been to the lake, I've seen it myself, the people there work hard at trying to deliver it. The Waikato River Cleanup Fund, no change. There's an there's amount of funding over 30 years, but that, the real value of the, do of the funding will reduce over time. No change to uh, Waikato River co-governance. No change to the Waikato River co-management. No change to the waste disposal levy disbursement to local authorities. Mr Speaker, the environment budget is a disgrace. The environment budget is lacking in any vision, any foresight, any protective measures, and simply plays into the hands of this government's agenda to mine and drill everything they can get their hands on in terms of our natural resources. Doesn't matter whether we have the legal right to do it or not, this government will proceed to exploit our environment 
in order to produce dollars, and usually for their friends. So Sky City were sold the gambling laws, Warner Brothers were sold the employment laws, and now we have Shell being sold the Crown Mineral laws. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call Maggie Berry. Thank you, Mr Speaker.